Oh. Well, <laughs> sis. <laughs> well, hey, loves. I haven't been live in quite a while, and um, I'm just here to say hi and to uh, encourage each and every one of you to get out there and vote. So, um, I know there's some of us that may not be following politics whatsoever. Um, yeah, and um, but you may not be following politics itself, but you understand that a lot of the issues that are happening are broadcast everywhere. I mean, you see the changes in the world, you see everything that's happening, especially right in this country. And for me, um, recently, I just recently, uh, who is that? Oh, I just recently um, became a US citizen. And because, oh, hey, sis. Oh. I first started talking about voting and getting out here to vote and and getting out here to to vote and stuff like that because you have to protect your rights but you also have to stand up for our community because there are people out here who are not representing us in the best way and we can you know sidestep and talk about traumas and all that kind of stuff. But I think by 2022, we do know about therapy. There's calm, there's better health, there's so many other things. There's still walking therapy. I mean, so can you fix that before? Uh... Uh. Wow. Hi. Hey, how are you? Hey, I am well, beautiful. Well, first off, I must say I have always loved uh, everything you've had to say, you know, and it was really amazing. And what you spoke up for um, Zaya Wade uh, the other day, that was mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. And um, I was just on this thing. I was talking about voting, right? And uh, it just got into then Tabitha. Tabitha's my sister. And, it just got, it went into, you know, how we are faced with so many um, difficulties in our community. For quite a while, I had to take that, you know, that back seat and observe. Because sometimes we're in it, we're in it, we're in it. And you're looking around you and you're seeing just this chaos. Right. But sometimes out of the chaos, there is good happening. But think about if the chaos were not there, if we were able to remove that, it, that internal chaos, how much further we would grow. The thing about it is I think that a lot of people, when they step into these positions, they're doing it for fame and not for the, the purpose of elevation, right? And so we're seeing a lot of people who are abusing these positions because they understand that the grant funding is going to be there and that after your first year, nobody's paying you any attention. And I always remind people, we are still the charity case when it comes down to a lot of these issues, right? So these folks are pouring millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars into us and into the things that we're speaking on but then they're leaving us to our own devices and this is one of those moments where we have to be very honest with ourselves and like you said we have to dig into these people's lives we can't just trust that because people are community that they're also not bad people being community does not absolve you of being a person who can do wrong and so what happens when we step into the space where we say as community members and as community leaders if they don't hold you accountable, we are. We are watching you. We're watching our babies. We're watching our nieces and our nephews because you're not going to come into these spaces and vilify them or make us easy to vilify because you're misusing funds, because you're mistreating children, because you're mistreating the staff, or because you're plain and simple taking all of the money and getting every surgery known to man, but then out here acting as if, uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Look here, you brought me on here to talk, so we're going to talk, oh right? Oh, my like, that, God. 
we have to be honest about the way that people utilize their positions and how they come from places of uh, places of power in order to kill, steal, and destroy the mission. A lot of us will like really overturn the the goodness of everything that we have going on for the sake of trying to be the best person in the spotlight at the time. And we have to we have to do away with that. Like we have to be okay with knowing that if I never get an award, if Glad or Gilead never calls me to a gala, I'm okay with knowing that I'm helping these people people in this community and they know that. I don't care if the white folks at the top know that. As long as my community knows that I'm doing the work that's going to be helpful to people, like we have to be comfortable in that space. And I don't think that we have enough messages that talk about that, you know? And to be comfortable in a comfortable in a space, right? It means that a lot of us have to face ourselves. Oh. Right? Yeah. Yes. Because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at some of the things that have been happening and very disgusting. I know there was one um, member of the community that uh, was recently arrested, right? Yes. Um, yes. And, you know, there have been, you know, some stand-ups for that, but I, I'm thinking to myself, how many more? How, how, how many more? How... And it's not a question of how long has this been going on. It's now, what are we going to do to stop it? Because there's no way in hell on the face of this earth that there's ever going to be anywhere where I'm going to look at one of my 14-year-old nephews or 15-year-old nephews or 13 or 16 or 17, my gosh, and think, hey, I'm telling you I'm helping you, but in exchange you are like, that, that is right. Funny. You know, and I can say that, and I speak from a place of being there. Mm -hmm. Like, me personally, there are times when I am extra, extra cautious. I explain myself. Like, even I, I play uh, Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> I play Fortnite, and I really don't get into groups. But sometimes my nephews and, uh, and my nieces, my stepkids, they come on and they're playing. And they will be with their friends. And I will say to them, listen. Tell you, let your friends know that I am an adult and I am on here with you. I go through those necessary precautions to not put myself in any kind of position where I can feel like it's, I, I, that it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. or it's not, it's not right. Because you're looking at innocence. You cannot look at a young person. First of all, you can't look at anyone that's struggling or trying to make it or looking to you for counsel and advice and sexualize them or fetishize them. For me growing up, when that happened, I looked at these people as disgusting and I did not trust adults. I did not trust systems. I did not trust any system because guess what? If I needed to make a dollar, right? All I needed to do was be sexy. That part. So what was I looking for? Right? That so part. you're showing me that because here you are the gatekeeper. You, you have the keys to the knowledge, you have the keys to allow me, and you say to me, the way for me to get through the door is be sexy, and then when I get sexy and I turn it out, then it's, I'm a whore and I don't deserve the jobs and I shouldn't be there. But the problem is we've, we've also sold this narrative back to our community that being sexy is the pinnacle of what you have to be in life, right? We, didn't, we did not give, the especially the girls, right? Because if we're going to have this conversation, we also have to be mindful of, that, of the fact that even in that case that we're talking about right now, I don't want to bring it up, yeah. but one of those people were arrested. There were two people involved. Why was the other person not arrested? So then when we come back to the conversation at hand right now, we're talking about the fact that in a lot of spaces within community, we don't teach the girls that they can be anything other than sexy. We don't teach the girls that they can be anything other than body and face and all of the things. And so when we go into these spaces and these moments where they're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to lean on my intellect. I'm going to lean on my skill. I'm going to lean on my trade. And the world says, forget your intellect, forget your skill, forget your trade, it's easy for them to think that it's okay because that's what we've laced them up to believe that that's all they can be. And now we have to undo, like us as the elders, us as the matriarchs of the community, we have to turn around and tell these people, look here, baby girl, you can have all of those things. It's nice, it's cute. The pictures are gonna always serve you. But if you don't have what's up here to back you up, they're gonna be able to play in your face every time. You every can try to get to the, they're going to play in your face every time. 
if you you got the body and you can get the contract, but if you know if you don't know how to read that contract, guess what? Who's gonna take half of your money? Come on, you like, are you absolutely have to be right. You are abs and you know what? I think that we have developed this culture now where we're so afraid to give it to people straight. And yes, I'm an advocate of show love, right? I am show love, show love, show love. The tough love is not necessary all the time, but sometimes it has to be tough love. Because, mm -hmm. like Angelica said, you know, when I saw her video, I made, I, I made my video because I was just sitting outside, and I was just like, you know what? I'm just sick and tired of sitting around pacifying my brothers and my sisters and telling them, oh, it's okay, the system, the system. I even mm -hmm. took it back to where it was about slavery. We talk about our ancestors. Our ancestors worked for those people that they were fighting against. They showed up for work. They showed up. They did what they had to do. They saved. They fought through it to be able to say, you know, that last moment, yes, goodbye. Yes, I'm my own. Yes, I'm my independence. And I feel like a lot of times we just sit around. So I was up there. I was just making the video. And then I guess it's the universe. You know how that works. Right. And <laughs> I saw Angelica. And it was real because sometimes people forget the strife, the struggle that their ends, the, the ones that came before them had to go through for them to be able to say, no, I'm not going to do this. You can't claim something that you haven't suffered through. You can empathize, you can be there, but you have to understand you're standing on these shoulders. Make us proud, make them proud. Every time I show up for work, I always remember when the girls would say to me, listen, to have a job, as a girl, as one of us, is a blessing. That do your job. And do it well. And do it exceptionally well. Because you know that they're rooting against you. When I show up in the space, I'm not... I, I, I love the idea that we've come to the conclusion that we can just be there for ourselves. That I don't represent nobody but me. But that's a lie. And we yeah, know yeah. that. We, girl, we let know me tell that. you. Let me tell you. Every time I go out there, I get so nervous. And it's nerve wracking at times that it's scary yes. because I, it's, it's so, it's such diversity within us mm -hmm. that you can't just say one thing and expect it to flow for everyone. So it never will. You're right. never going to be able to speak your truth and expect that truth to apply to right. everyone. Everyone. So you can only speak your truth and be open to receive the truth of others and see where the intersectionality is and then work from there and work together. We mm -hmm. cannot stand divided and expect to gain somewhere. And yes, you can work. Let me tell you, when I went in for that audition, people have said to me, oh, you got lucky. You're not living what we lived anymore. And I'm like, wait, hold on. They didn't walk up to me and say, here's a part, mm. right? I had to compete with other people for that from a space of poverty, from a space of inexperience because I had never been given the opportunity to actually get that far in a casting call before. And at times it felt like people were taking that away from me. It was like they gave you something, so now you owe us. And I was like, wait a second. What I owe you is the continued push for you to do better. It, it's, it, we have to want to do better. We have to, A, if, 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 if it's going to be sex work, make sure you're great at it. Make and sure you have you a plan. But my thing is also, stop expecting me to feel guilty for making it out. If the goal is for all of us to win, then we have to understand that not all of us are going to win at the same time, which means that when your sister wins, it's just one less person in front of you in the line and your chance is coming. Stop but you see, feeling, like, they look on. at it not as one less person in the line in front of you. They look at it as one person blocking them from getting where they need to be. And my, the mentality has to change. But let's talk about the fact that in some cases, that's true. Because that's some, true. Some, some girls get through the door and they close it behind them, right? Like, and we have to be mindful of that. But I think that we also have to be mindful that whatever is for you is for you. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you close that door and lock it, because they're going to open up a window over here and I'm going right. to climb through that.
right? And so your mindset has to constantly be that whatever I've prepared myself for, whatever I've done the work for, I am going to get that because I've stood 10 toes down in this and I deserve that. I'm going to get that because I've worked hard for it. I'm not going to get that because I'm the pretty face girl. I'm not going to get that because my body is the most sickening in the line. I'm going to get it because when I showed up, I showed up prepared and they saw that and they offered me what was due to me. And right Thank now, it's you. not due to you. That's Thank you. Thank you. Some of the, some of us just don't see that. They don't see that it has to be due to you and it takes work. You can't come from nothing. And I was talking to my sister Tabitha and for a while I really wasn't, I wasn't too close to anyone. And Tabitha was that one that was just like, okay, bam. You know, it was like, I'm your sister. It's not about anything else other than the fact that I'm here and I want to celebrate you. And I love you. She didn't see anything else but the same girl that was a sister. And that was so important because to me, it was like the whole world saw a different person. And I was still the same person just with growth. That part. You know? A lot of people are never going to be able to take your elevation because they think that it means failure for them. And we have to be very mindful about the way that we see the world as it pertains to folks who understand our experience. Wow. Because my, my success, my win, my whatever, that's mine to hold. And wow. I think that we have to be mindful about visibility and, 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 and um, visibility and, and onus, right? What I own is not passed off to you, right? So whether <laughs> I won this race, whether I whether I fumbled that race, whatever I did with that race, that's mine to own, right? But the fact of the matter is the fact that I was there, the visibility, right? We can share that visibility, but we don't own the win or the loss. Right. So be happy that I got in that space, whether I won or I lost, because they didn't think we could get there. And now you could come behind me and let them know that, okay, we didn't win the first time, but we got it. Don't win time. now. Right, exactly. We constantly open the door, and that's what you have to do when you're in these spaces. Bring your sisters into those spaces, your brothers into those spaces. You know what I'm saying? Pull the door open. Yes. Hey, she, sis. She's sitting in the Oh, and she's been trying to get this thing going. And I have not seen it. Oh, there she is. Well, Auntie Tay, I bet. I, I hope I, I did this right. When I tell you I was not doing social media <laughs> or anything like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, but this feels good. And you see where we can share space like this? I think no. it's just like everything because we can talk. And I'm quite sure that all three of us do not agree on everything. everything. Right. Okay. But what we do know is we have a foundation together and we have to build on that and let each other know, okay, if you, if you want to be over here, you're over here, but we all good. If I'm over exactly. here, I'm here. We all good. Exactly. You know, we yeah, all we got access. Got I gotta we can say, all eat. Right. Gotta, I've been sitting here. Hope I'm going to get you, Nisi. Because I just lost my voice. I'm still like, yes! You know, <laughs> They probably think something happening in here. <laughs> but baby, when I tell you that I believe that everything happens for a reason, like this was on my heart. Like you guys been able, well, you girls, let me be very clear, have been able to articulate so much of what I have. Like I have these same dialogues with my sister constantly and you know with me and you talk it's always we pouring into each other to keep pushing and I think like you said there's a sense of entitlement of why her not me as opposed to saying yes her me next oh you understand what I'm saying instead of saying how let me learn and I always tell people that when you're sitting there in a position of power and you have other agencies around you you said something earlier about the girls getting in and closing the door let me tell you something i have heard that people will not say certain names and spaces because they think by somehow saying that name they diminish their chance at having something and my thing is no 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 you're more powerful by your connection to others but sis, let me just explain this to you on others when you close the door on others you close the door to yourself and stop thinking that somebody who makes it, oh God, I'm about to cry. I was just telling my sister earlier that when I see things like you, her, 
Angelica, my niece, and they're like, when I see people doing stuff, there's like this level of joy that happens. I'm excited, like, yes, another one, me next, another one, me next. It's not why her, not me. It's always me next. Hello. And it's always to cheer for others because when it's your turn, it's your turn, and nothing's yeah. going to be able to stop and it. So, some people don't get that. They, they don't get that. But what you also have to um, get into is that sometimes it's not your time. Ooh. Right, and we get we, people get anxious and they get upset about it not being your time. When I was coming up, I wanted to be on every possible show that I could possibly be. Show up, I had access, actors access, all that stuff, paying money I didn't even have. Right, but there it wasn't the time. So it's not about someone holding you back at times. It's just sometimes it is not the time for this. And what that means is you have to prepare. It doesn't mean you give up. It means you continue to prepare. It continues if you continue. If you're acting, you continue to learn the monologues. If you're working with computers, you continue to learn your skills and your programs. You continue to grow. You don't just sit there and complain about what you're not doing and what you're not gaining access to. You prepare for it. You get ready for it because that time will come. It will come for each and every one of us. And as far, and since you said something else, but it just slipped my mind. And, oh, yes. And those girls that are on people in general because i like to speak in general because i see human beings right and i think that a lot of the things that we experience come across the board not when it comes to racism and prejudice and oppression but when it comes to certain everyday life experience like job experiences and stuff like that and i feel like when people get into position and they take that position and close the door it's because they're not solidified in that position mm -hmm. they're not solidified within themselves knowing that they deserve to be there so instead of uh, uh, becoming concrete in what they're doing and being confident in themselves. They're constantly worried and fearing what others are, that someone else is going to come in and take their job. Because someone you know you didn't deserve the job in the first place. <laughs> you showed, look here, but uh, because that's the thing that we don't talk about. A lot of the girls are fearful because they know they don't, they don't deserve to be there. You know you backwatered your way in. You know you stepped on people's face to get in. You know that you shook hands with the right people and ate the right lunches and bought the right wigs and bought the right, you know, merchandise to hop into the space. And now you're shook because you know that there's someone that is more qualified that is better than you to do this. You've shared space with that person i've seen you with that person and now you're waiting on the day for me to turn around and say hey you used to hang out with dominique don't you can you connect me with her and you don't want to do it because you know that when she steps in the building she's going to be prepared and you're not and you're afraid that you're going to be exposed for the fraud that you are and so instead of being in fear for your entire life Girl. get your ducks in a row and show up ready Girl, if you show up ready, you ain't got to get ready. You don't have to be afraid of who's coming after you because you've already carved your lane and you're ready. Ooh. Oh, stop. You, heard you are one brilliant woman. I just have to say that. You are it's brilliant. And I love, and you know what? And I think a lot of that comes from the, the self-acceptance, the self-knowledge, the self-understanding. Because unless you really get into you, you can't see the world At from all. a place of, okay, yeah, <laughs> I own it. Yes, I have issues that will happen, but guess what? Those are challenges, not obstacles or barriers. We moving forward. Thank you. Let me say this. I had to run around because it was just shut up in my bones. <laughs> Baby, when I tell you that I was telling my sister earlier that when you were around, because I can't talk to nobody who's not on the healing journey. We really don't have anything to speak about, right? Because when you're around other people who are on their healing journey and you are both healing from trauma and you don't have that trauma bond, because people that's healing is healing. There's no trauma bonds to be connected because I'm dealing with my stuff. And you can do the work, but the most important work that you do is on yourself. Mm. But now, if, as Dominique said, when you prepare and you do the work for yourself, when it's your time, there's nothing that's going to be able to stop you because you're prepared, you're seasoned, you've been around the people. Surround yourself with those who will have those different conversations. Because when you're about change, your conversation change, the way you see things change, the way you move change, who you allow access to you changes. And that's the season that I'm in. I'm in such a season of change that when I'm invited into the, or I share space, in these spaces like this, like I'm not here for anything other than saying the truth 
to what's going on, yeah, yeah. right? And we need to figure out, because it's not just the girls. It's everyone. We need to figure out how that we, just because someone else's rises doesn't mean the work that I've done diminishes. I heard Marissa say one time, just because you don't see the work being done doesn't, doesn't mean, mean it done. That part. So, I don't need you to see everything I'm doing because really, you might try to block something. So I'm gonna have to keep my stuff to me. And when it's time, I reveal. I will let you know. Mm -hmm. many things that happens in my life individually that I don't always share. There's things that happen in your life individually that you don't always share. And my sister, the boo, we do it when we are ready. I've learned to move when I'm ready. So when people say, why haven't I spoke on this? Or why haven't I showed up at that? You know what I tell them? Everybody else is showing up and speaking. I don't need to say what somebody else is already saying. But, I don't need to do that. But also, too, <laughs> and what you also have to remember, and, you know, the whole, I tell my sister this, like, a lot. I had to get on her for it. I was like, listen, listen. You don't have to show up at every single thing, especially when you are exhausted and tired. You can plan, you can prepare, because a lot of it is showing up and it's just the same back and forth. A lot of times I would be like, well, why am I here? Because we just had this conversation at another party a few weeks ago and nothing is being done. So we're here having the same conversation. And then a year later, we're not having the same conversation. Having the same oh. conversation. But when I call you or I email you, you're busy or you're out of the office or you can't do this or oh you haven't spoken, but you're ready for us to get together and party and bash everyone. The funny thing about it, and one thing that I learned from both Angelica and Ashley Marie Preston is that you gotta know when to pass the mic. A lot of the girls don't know when to pass the mic. Get up off. Like, my thing is, like Nikki said, if you ain't shitting, then get off the pot. For real, for real. And it's well, a lot of girls. If I'm drinking, I'm sorry. The mic is mine. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But it, it, it's one of those things where I'm joking, a lot I'm of joking, people. I'm joking. That was a. They don't get it. Went to the, oh. Not to cut you off, Hope, but we were in Tobago and we had an experience with some rum punch. So I'm just going there. But please continue. But they, they don't, I don't think a lot of people get it. Like you said, we keep having the same conversation over and over and over and over again, hoping for different results. And what's that class? The definition of insanity. And so at what point do we say, I'm going to have this conversation once, maybe twice. After that, I'm going to just assume that all you want to do is vent. And I'm not here to vent. I'm here to advocate and change the work. There are people, like a lot of folks don't understand the difference between advocacy and activism, right? Advocacy is the thing that you say. Activism Activism is the stuff that you do. So if you are just an advocate, that's cool. I can kick it with you when I need an, an article written or something like that. I can consult with you. I can put you on a little payroll one too quick. But if we're trying to get the, the, the balls rolling, if I need somebody to go stand in front of these police with me, I need an activist. I need someone who is willing to get up and act with me. And so if all you're about is this, it's only so long I'm going to do that. There's only so many brainstorm sessions and ideation sessions I'm going to have before I say, okay, so who's organizing? this and where are we going let me tell you something i told you my niece was fired didn't i tell you this little girl right here well Did i know i've been following her i was gonna, I was gonna I, say look, i could sit on my hands because <laughs> let me tell you something let me tell you something i told you know what i told you earlier and you know how much i love you i'm super 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 proud of you and i want to just take it back a little bit to something that there have been people who tried to access me, but not to access me for me, to access me for her. And I want to speak on that, right? And when I say no, they don't understand that no comes from a space of my sister has agency to say and do what she wants. And I've made mistakes by opening doors to people who felt like they had access to me, so they had access to her. Right. And and we speak all love, but you ain't seen nothing behind closed doors when she tried. Why the did you tell me that? I told you that? So my thing is, I don't let people access her through me because she has a direct contact. Reach out to her agent, right, or to her, and they will let you know. It's done. done because I know her doesn't give you access to her. You understand? Oh. I also know the access and privilege and being in these spaces and having these connections because it makes you more 
marketable. But something you said earlier, if you don't know how to negotiate your own contract and you just show up looking pretty and you got the look, and as you said, you bought the right wig, you didn't ate lunch with the right people, now you're sitting there in front of the people and you're looking with no like tools. a fraud. With and no now tools. You, now you're looking like a fraud and they're looking at you and you're like, but let me make a phone call. No, boo, you should have made the phone call before you came up in these doors. Um, to make sure you stuck with together. It's about so, making that plan. It's about having strategy. And if so you don't have strategy, you're not. And sometimes, listen, when you make a plan, the plan within the plan, within the plan, the process may change, but the plan is still there. You know, and folks don't make plans anymore. They see what they want. They want to go for that. And that's it. And someone and the problem is a lot of people feel that someone should just give it to them. Right. And then we get mixed up because and we have to be careful when we're we're calling these things out because some people hide under the the the, the sufferings of others and when it's just their own laziness at times, you know. And when you see a girl working and doing her hardest and she may not let you into that door, sometimes you can think about the options that you have to, is your response because sometimes she could be a gatekeeper. Sometimes she could be looking at it as, listen, you are not ready and you're not going to come in here and embarrass me because let me tell you something. There have been people from our community, right, <laughs> that have disappointed the hell out of me. When I tell you show up with star freaking expectations and we are working on a budget trying a girl had one tv show and they think i own mansions and it's like okay let me give you an opportunity here because i want others to see you and sometimes these people would show up and they're talking oh i don't have this i don't have that i don't have the other no one is giving me an opportunity there's no space for me and you give them the space and the opportunity and they go in and they do the craziest things as in just simply not being polite or as in being unmannerly or as that matter of fact, lying about their credentials or imagine showing up and saying you're a hairstylist and you burn hair. Like, no, when you show up again, you have to show up and be prepared for what you're saying that you're doing. And when you are complaining, which I really don't like, please make sure that you know what you're complaining about. Because if you're complaining that no one is allowing you onto sets or no one is allowing you into spaces, right? Is it really a certain thing or is it you? What's your intention? Right. I, I always ask people that, what is your intention? What's your intention for this connection you're trying to make? What's your intention for this opportunity that you want me to provide you with? What's your intention for being in this space? And once you get those things, if I can provide them to you, what are you going to do beyond those things, right? And you know, one of the hardest things I think too, because I experienced it, is knowing when what is what. Because mm -hmm. like my sister had an experience earlier and she was like, sis, you know what? They didn't even see anything other than a human being. And I feel like sometimes I've gone into spaces ready for a fight that wasn't there. Oh. So I'll speak to that. So <laughs> in, my current, in my current position, like, <clears throat> I don't necessarily just deal with issues that plague the trans community. So normally when I'm meeting with other people, it can be a cis male, a police officer, a lawyer, or someone who has just had their basic human rights discriminated against. And I go in, and not saying that all people do, but sometimes I go in with the notion that as soon as they ask me what my job description is, and if I say LGBTQ or trans, they're going to judge me. It's a target. Uh, I've been able to provide service for people who didn't even care what I was. I could have been a unicorn with gold hair and sparkly eyes. They were coming for the service. And, I'm, and, and I, I don't think that, for me, it's safe to say that we don't always have to approach this work with our gender first. We show up as ourselves. I'm a Black woman of trans experience. 
You don't need to know all of that unless I'm willing to tell you that. And I understand that there's many conversations around how you should be able to say it and show up. And it's not because I'm ashamed of being trans. Everyone knows that's my experience. But again, to be able to deal with people and not have to always disclose that I'm trans, it was somehow like I was happy that I was able to do the work and my identity didn't show up before they met Tabitha. Because more often than not, we go into spaces and we let our identity show up. And for some of us, not all of us, we let our identity give us, or we think that it gives us a free pass to do some disrespectful shit. Hmm. And then when we're accountable, hmm. like, well, I'm black and I'm trans and I get no the hell you don't. Just because you trans doesn't give you the right to be rude. And it's, 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 that, it's that white woman's ad adaptation rhetoric. And I think that that's another thing, too, that the younger girls come in with, which is looking at the way that some of our white co counterparts deal and navigate and feeling like they're going to be able to have that same privilege. Sis, she was able to say and do that stuff because she was white. It ain't have nothing to do with her being trans. It's because she still benefits from the system that oppresses us. And so on top of you being trans, you have to remember that when you walked in the room, they saw this first, my love. You had to tell them that you were trans. They saw her be visibly trans and still gave her the benefit for the doubt because of this right here and we have to navigate as such so you can't walk in the room with more privilege than the world is willing to give you and you know that right you know that you have to understand that when you come into this space you're going to have to automatically be 10 times better than everybody else there because they're expecting you to fail one because you black and two because of all the other caveats that come with your name let me tell you there is Ooh. a little story i was telling my sister today i was like listen sometimes in order for you to get from point a to point b it's gonna be a journey and when you look at the path it's gonna be down a ravine going through rocks, you're going to get cuts and scrapes and bruises and burns and all kinds of shit. Piranhas going to attack you. And you looking up and you see him, you see him, no, you know, the other that. side, part B. You see him, part B, but you still going, you going. And then you look up and you look up and you see somebody with a hand glider just gliding from A to B. Or you look over and you're like, wait a second, there's a bridge. There's a fucking bridge. A bridge. <laughs> but you know what? It wasn't for you. Your path was that gutter. Your path was that, that stress. Like, I tell people to this day, it's like, there's nothing you can say to me that is going to make me want to change my journey. Because if I change my journey, then I wouldn't be who I am. The rape, the molestation, the beatdowns, the, the gun in the face, all the, the everything, right? It, 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 it is, it's horrible, but it's a part of me. So when I look back and I look to the future, right, it's like, I've been through this. So what the fuck is going to stop me now? So yes, I'm going to go through those ravines. I'm going to go through those things. And I'm going to look at those people that have the hang glider and those people that are in the freaking, that found the damn bridge. And I'm going a, I'm to a clap for them. I'm going to clap for them because I know that what I'm going through is my experience and my path. And even if I made, met that Y in the road and I'm on that path because I made that, I'm, I, I took the, the right side instead of the left, then you know what? That was supposed to be my path. I got to contend with it. I made that choice. I got to stay with it and get through it. You know, get to where I need to be. And some people have come at us with, again with the, oh, well, you made it. No, again, it wasn't luck. We worked for this. Everything we Ooh. have, we worked That's for. And hard. we are living example that you can. And if you need therapy, get your ass into therapy. That it's just that. And you work, if you're working in an organization, especially there should be no excuse for you not to have to be at a therapist office. At all. So, and, at that's, all. and I think that there's this like one size fit all lens to how we're supposed to show up in the world. And the fact that each one of us have different narratives and as you say through the ravine through the rock some took the bridge some flew in you have those people that will have their own journey but they can't even focus on their journey because they're so concerned on why the hell did hope just fly over and why did dominique walk across the bridge and why couldn't i do it and my thing is you have to really dig into your process and trust your process and work through your own stuff i teach my kids this all the time i think i just saw one of my sons hey ray but 
what I will say is that if you continue to do your work and that's work on the self, then yeah. everything We've been through some stuff. You know I've been through some stuff. And sometimes and it just comes down to, like Angelica said, I mean, that's my girl because she's real forever. Hi, T.S. Madison, the girls, India. Yes, the, yeah, we real. And she, like she said, figure it the fuck out. And I'm not sitting around and, holding your hand no more. Figure it the fuck at out. All. At all. Don't expect me to pull you up by your bootstraps, bitch. I just got mine yesterday. I just you, got mine yesterday. I ain't even now, break in yet. Hidden. But listen, if I see you trying and you honestly trying and they're and they're yes, if you trying and honestly trying, I'm a root for you. I'm gonna be there for you. I'm gonna provide the support if I can. I'm gonna actually hang off the cliff and hold your hand to make sure you get where you gotta go. But I'm not going to pull you up. I'm not gonna throw you over tell you how to eat once you get there, point you in the direction of the nearest bathroom. I'm not doing that. Feed you and wipe your ass too? I'm not doing that. No, no. My nail's too long for that. <laughs> but again, like you're not entitled to. And I think that's another thing that we don't look at. We think that people, you probably, and I know you probably lost friends, just like I know my sister have lost sisters. When people start to feel entitled to the work that you do, and they not, they in your darkest hour trying to figure out what you're going to pull this off or what you need to do to complete this task mm -hmm. but yet they show up with their entitlement and they're like well Miss Thing you know you can help me oh, because I saw your book Miss Thing can I get a book or can and my thing is when I always tell my sister it's the ones who talk about remember when you remember when those are the ones you got to get away from you immediately we were at the bar in 2001, Listen, and I bought you a they, drink. They and, and I remind you of who you were and try to keep you there based off their entitlement so they can keep you held to a place of where they can utilize you, but not understanding that as change has come, you have changed, and you're not that same person. So whenever I'm talking to someone and they start to pull the, girl, you remember when we used to? My conversation has been changed. I'm going to end this conversation very quickly in a nice way because I'm not that same person and you're not going to hold me to an idea on what you can't get past because I have evolved and I have in this time like have made some pivotal decisions that set myself back right mm -hmm. but I'm not blaming nobody else because I had to go through that marine myself and get out of there and when I got there I'll be damned if I put in all this work and you gonna tell me that I gotta do something for you because you yeah. didn't do it for me. I had to do it on my own. And I had to study, I had to learn, I had to make those mistakes, I had to be a force to get it right. So you're not gonna swoop in and profit on the chapter of my life that you just walked in on. We're not doing that. Be mindful of the people who wanna use your mouthpiece for their message. Exactly. There are some people that are not going to mess with you, that are not going to follow you, that are not going to promote anything that you're doing because they want your audience. They just don't want you to be the person talking to them. And when, and when they realize that you know that, <laughs> there's, a, there's always going to be a problem with you. There's always gonna be there's always gonna be a problem with anybody that keeps it real on top of real on top of real because not everybody can take that. And I ain't talking about the people who are bitches in disguise that is real and disguise that is hard truths. I'm talking about the people who don't mind saying I was wrong, this is right, I may not like the person, but the message hit, and so we're gonna move forward and we're gonna press on. There are people who want to constantly stay in a space where my word is the law, it's the only thing, and when you move beyond that space when you work on yourself when you're in a constant space of healing auntie there are people who want to pull you back down to their level because their goal isn't to heal their goal is to gain access to the people that they think that you have access to little do they know the only reason that these people are listening to me today is because i'm feeding them the real the second that i give them what you want me to give them and you think you gonna have access to them they're gone because that's not why they're here they're not here for me they're not here for you they're not they're here for what we offer internally and the second that that changes people realize it they switch up and they get ghosts there do you go. Take this, do not take this shit for granted. People are fickle. There you go. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. But listen, let me say hi to Venezuela and Chile and Brazil. And I think there was uh, some other places. Well, hi to y'all. Thank you for listening to us today. Um, please, if you're in the U.S., um, it is the election. Please get out and vote. Oh, oh. And I'm going to be doing these lives a lot more with my sister. Sis, thanks for encouraging me to do this. And Hope, thank you for thank coming you on here and taking the time. You know, they always say sometimes impromptu is everything. But yeah, the yeah. initial thing was for us to talk about, for me to just, you know, come back to life and tell y'all, you know, yeah, get out there and vote. Hey, Pose FXT. They right. Just, hey, Pose FXT. <laughs> <laughs> so... Sending y'all so much love. Hope, again, my love, keep doing what you're doing. We're going to be talking again. Trust me, you know, much love and much, much respect. Tabitha, my sis, I love you. To all of you that tuned in and joined in, thank you so much for sharing space with us today. I know um, a lot of you heard a lot of stuff. And um, if any of you were offended, oh, well. Um, but... Well, here's what I got to say. Here's what I got to say. Figure it the fuck out. Yeah, figure, figure it the fuck out. out. <laughs> all right, my beautiful wait, wait, wait. Princess, my queens. I love y'all. And to all of you, figure it the fuck out. Figure it the fuck out. <laughs> Bye. Bye.